Hey, it's Camo. Welcome to the show. We are in Brighton on the south coast of England. We'll be meeting up with Georgia next. So I guess I'm going. They said if I did coke, I could party all night. They said if I did coke, I could party all night. They lied. Find out the truth about cocaine. Drugfreeworld.org We're on the Brighton Pier. Now it's closed, as you can see from the sign until things start opening up again from the virus here. But normally in the summer, this place is jammed with people. We're on the south coast. You can see uh, the ocean out there. We'll get a little bit closer. Now this is the Brighton Palace Pier, the new pier. The old pier burned down years ago. Uh, and, it's, and I think it burnt again in the past several years. Um, so it's just a shell, but because it's a, a registered building, they can't tear it down. So uh, everybody's still trying to figure out what to do with it, but we won't go there. We're at the new pier. We're going to show you a little bit of Brighton so you get an idea what this seaside town is like. Showing you a bit around kind of Brighton and Brighton Pier, but right now we're going to head over to Preston Park and meet up with Georgia to talk about her music. It's Camo and uh, here with Georgia. This is cool. <laughs> we're in Brighton. This is Preston Park uh, and this is a, a rose garden, obviously. Uh, <laughs> it's a garden. It's supposed to be a rose garden. Uh, and flowers. <laughs> Uh, it's all just poly. <laughs> so, uh, so we had you on the show a little while ago doing a live session. Uh, how was that? Is it is it strange doing something on social media as opposed to uh, playing in front of a live audience? I mean, they're a live audience. They're just not in the same room with you. <laughs> yeah, no, it is. It's it's totally different because obviously usually you like you can feed off of people and. You can judge the vibe of a room and see what they're enjoying and what they're not so much. And when you're when you're talking to yourself and playing to yourself, it's yeah. very like it, you can't read any of that. Yeah. So um, 
And yeah, that's quite. It's quite hard, but you know. And you talk keep, to yourself. It's all right. <laughs> and you keep waiting for the audience applause, so there's yeah. no interaction that way. Yeah, usually my other half sits behind the camera and kind of does this, <laughs> <laughs> so I don't feel so. Um, because it isn't intimidating. You finish yeah. a song, it's silent. Silence, it's like yeah. like musicians' last nightmare. But yeah, um, yeah no, it's, it's all right. It's all right. <laughs> How long have you been doing uh, music? Oh years. My um, my family are all in the music industry anyway. So my dad oh, okay. is a musical theatre actor, and so is my sisters and my mum. So on. It's been a it's been an ongoing trend. Yeah. Definitely. So yeah, as long, honestly, it sounds really cringy, but as long as I can remember. Wow. Really. Yeah. Um, now you're still at the stage where you have to have a, a real job to support your music habit. Yes, I do. I, uh, I work in marketing yeah. and uh, I run websites and Amazon accounts. Oh, nice. <laughs> it's really exciting. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> and luckily, the companies I work for are really lovely. Yeah. So, um, yeah, yeah they're, they're really nice people. Yeah. So, it's all right. <laughs> it could be cool. worse. Now, Brighton is, is such a cool place. Um, it's a very artistic community. Um, is, it, is it easier to kind of fit in here? than it would be someplace else? Yeah, I'd say so. I mean, I'm from I'm from Hertfordshire, so it's about yeah. 20 minutes up from London. Yeah. And the vibe is completely different there to yeah. how it is in Brighton. Like, yeah. I remember when I used to come and visit Brighton, I'd be like, oh, I can turn up my jeans and like yeah. wear some strange shoes. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's nice because you, you just don't have to think about it. People yeah. are just really accepting and everyone's really chill here. It's yeah. nice. Uh, it's, this has always been one of my favorite parts of the country. Yeah. Really. yeah. Um, so talk, let's talk about your music. Um, who are some of the artists that kind of inspire you? Definitely Ashley McBride. Yeah. At the moment, I'm obsessed with Ashley McBride. I think her lyrics are just just amazing. Just I, think, <laughs> I think she's broken a wall um, where women are getting her lyrics and really understanding her independence yeah even though she's signed to a major label she's she's not doing things the way label artists do them. Yeah. she's still operating like it. yeah no she is she's very um, outspoken as well which is quite nice and she has a lot of songs that reference the fact that she doesn't yeah. she doesn't follow the norm and i think that's that's really sort of respected that's so a hard respect. thing because you want to you want to strive for that commercialism, and I don't use commercialism in a negative way, it's popularity. Yeah, yeah. Um, and yet, you want to be doing what you do with nobody telling you yeah. this is how <laughs> yeah, you do Yeah, no, it. definitely. It's kind of trying to find a way to make what you believe in also a bit commercial. Yeah. So kind of get the, the balance so that you, you never lose sight of sort of what your music's about and, and what you're about. but you kind of keep in mind that you need other people to believe in it yeah. as well. <laughs> yeah. Now, how is it... I mean, I know how things work in a city like Nashville, where it's a, a very musical community and almost everybody you know is plugged in one way or another. Yeah. How is, does that work when you're a struggling artist where there's no real musical community? Um, it's a lot harder. You have to really kind of search um, and go into the depths of social media to try and find these people. But um, it is doable. I mean, Brighton has a really lovely country scene. Um, there's a lot of people, like, I don't know whether you've heard of Annie, she, she runs a lot of open mics and really nice gigs at um, the Brunswick, which is yeah. a, a lovely pub um, and music venue. Which still is closed. <laughs> which is still closed, <laughs> but hopefully it will reopen. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so there's a there's a nice scene in Brighton, definitely, and more so than than I would have thought. But then even when I was back in Hertfordshire, like there was um, I, there was a group of sort of me and and loads of really cool like folk musicians and country singers that would all go around to the different open mics. Yeah. So, um, yeah, well, that's like um, Yeah, <laughs> everybody's <laughs> hitting the, the songwriter rounds. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Do you get much of that here? Yeah. Songwriter right rounds. Yeah, yeah. Um, the the Brunswick hosts quite a few. Really. Cool. Um, Annie Evans runs them. Uh, so yeah, they're they're really cool actually. There's quite a few of them around. So where does you, where do you think your music kind of fits in style-wise with what's going on? 
<laughs> do you mean in terms of like different artists and yeah you know if you had to if you had to bracket your music with other artists who would you bracket i'd say it's somewhere between sort of ashley mcbride and miranda lambert so that kind of a little bit more alternative country yeah. i guess a bit more kind of heavy heavy drums and yeah. that kind yeah. of vibe yeah. definitely electric guitars yeah. oh that's neat um i I mean, I always like that rock sound from the different country. Yeah. Not the pop sound so much. Mm. Uh, although, you know, that's really easy to dismiss, but it shouldn't be. It's yeah. just another, yeah. you know, the pop sound of country music has always been there. Yeah. Uh, but uh, the, the rock sound coming into it is really cool, I think. Yeah, yeah, no, I agree. Now, do you play a lot solo or do you get a band? Um, I play a lot solo at the moment, yeah. and my other half's a drummer, oh, so that's handy. <laughs> so do you have to just use one syllable words around him? <laughs> <laughs> Lucky he's, he's alright. <laughs> oh god. Do you ever he's have to remind this. him around the house that there's a machine for that? <laughs> <laughs> you know what, with, with him it's really funny, he just, everything is tappable. Everything, everything is tappable. Like, bedsheet he'll just be sat there yeah. doing this. Um, so he's, uh, a, yeah, he's a drummer so his full-time job is pizza delivery though, right? <laughs> no, he's honestly super intelligent. He's actually studying um, artist management. Oh, which excellent. Which is super yeah. handy. Um, so yeah, yeah. And he plays Cajon for me when I go out on yeah. my, just me and my guitar. But yeah. I used to have a band, um, went back in Hertfordshire, but yeah. obviously moved to Brighton fairly yeah. recently. How long have you been here? Oh, <laughs> about two years. Two, oh, two years. Yeah, yeah. That's... but to me it's fairly recent. Yeah. <laughs> I still don't know where I am. Yeah. Um, so yeah, no, it's, it's been all right. It's been all right. Cool. Um, who who do you see as kind of an inspiration as far as songwriting goes? Um, honestly, Ashley and Randall. Randall. Yeah. yeah. I really, really love their songwriting, and obviously Miranda writes a lot with Chris Lannies as well. Yeah. And and the three of them together just come up with the most amazing lyrics that are just yeah, it's really, really cool. So if you merge it, it's uh, Ash Landa. Yeah, a bit of Brandy Clark as well. Oh, I like Brandy Clark. Oh, I can't mer merge the three. <laughs> too much Bra on the brain. Brash Munda. <laughs> Doesn't work. <laughs> Do you see yourself as a songwriter who sings or a singer who writes? singer who writes definitely I love songwriting and I will write for other people and be more than happy doing it and really love doing it but singing is just it's just something that I've always loved definitely. how do you pitch songs to people because it's it's going to be all people that are kind of operating within your network, isn't it? That you would be yeah. pitching songs to. It's hard to get them to bigger artists. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, I just, I just write for anyway. friends and yeah. yeah. At the moment, it's just writing for friends and, and a lot of them like what I write anyway, so it's fairly easy. Yeah. <laughs> um, and co-writing with them too, yeah. it was a lot of fun. Yeah, co-writing is something probably that is been exported from that show because that's yeah. what it's all about there. Yeah, but it's yeah. So, I mean, you can get through a song so quickly when you're co-writing, yeah. it's amazing. <laughs> or not. <laughs> or not, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, there's a, a whole bunch of opinions, but yeah, I mean, my experiences so far have been, have been all good, so. Um, so you're very much a country artist, country folkish, yeah. country rock. Yeah, most country rock. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And you mentioned earlier about different sounds from different places, and I've noticed that's true as a you know kind of an outsider looking in at the British music scene. There is you know you don't get Britpop anywhere else. It's yeah. it's unique. That sound is unique. And there's always been distinctive sounds in rock, you know. An East End London sound and Brighton sound and Sheffield, and so it's always been different. Does that hold true with the style of music you're doing? I would say that country is is quite you can, you can bring it to different places. Like obviously the UK has a really lovely country yeah. scene, but it does sound different to national country, definitely. Yeah. 
Um, and I mean, the the stuff that I, everything I've recorded at the moment has been recorded over in Nashville. Yeah. So I'm um, I'm trying to stay true to the the sort of the Nashville country sound because that's that's what I I love. Yeah. Um, but I know that a lot of artists really love the, the UK country music and like the, the country pop that we've got going at the yeah. moment is quite. And country pop yeah. here is different than the country pop. Yeah, 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 yeah it, it is. Very much different. Yeah, over here, it's, I think the Shires are a good example of yeah. the UK country pop. Definitely. Yeah, um, and it's just you know because there's no, I think Canada and Australia are very much the same with their country. And they're both, both very similar to the US in that there's still that rural and agricultural tie to the land. Sing about farms and you can sing about pickup trucks and stuff like that but not so much here yeah you know? yeah i mean you can kind of pick it up <laughs> in a song yeah. as like just to stay true to the country but um i think i i, I try and I'll, I'll reference like a front porch and stuff yeah. just because that's that's what i've grown up listening to yeah. like, and there are front porches, we have front porches yeah, exactly. because you know, don't use them as, as well as everyone does over there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you can kind of pick up scenes, but yeah, as you say, things like pick up trucks, like yeah. you maybe see one every 200 cars over yeah. here, yeah. but Nashville is like every other car is yeah. a pick up. Uh, okay, one final question. Uh, you're going out on your first major mining worldwide tour. Really, really, really huge. Okay. Well, in that case, <laughs> Ashley McBride. <laughs> you have Ashley. Hundred percent. Or Midland, actually. Yeah, I it's... really love Midland. I think they're really cool. And I went to see them at um, C to C, yeah. and they just had. There were so many people that had never heard of Midland, and then they played, and everyone was like, "These guys are cool. Yeah. Like they're really cool." So yeah, I like and their boots. It, and it's they funny. Can... There are acts, American acts, that for one reason or another just can't catch in the US and they come over here and they do incredibly uh, it's, it's really strange so musical taste here support different forms of country that aren't supported on a bigger scale in the US yeah, I'd say so. cool. now we're going to go to your place and <laughs> you're going to play some music for us excellent we are here with Georgia in Brighton at Preston Park we're going to her house next to her. <laughs> Welcome back. Uh, Camo here with Georgia in the beautiful seaside uh, town of Brighton. You're, we're in your back garden, though. We are, yeah. yeah this, isn't, this isn't public Brighton. It looks pretty. It, so. it does look pretty. Yeah. Uh, so you're going to do some songs for us. Yes. Uh, let's remind people you do have an album or an EP and a single that will be coming out soonish. Soon, yeah, yeah. hopefully, hopefully soon, okay. as, as long as everything goes as it's supposed to. <laughs> uh, let's tell people your socials and every way they can connect with you right now. Yes, yeah, so um, all my socials are under Georgia Official UK, um, and then my website is under GeorgiaOfficial.co.uk. Nice. Okay, <laughs> so. Uh, I don't think we need to do a whole lot of introducing. It's Georgia. So here we go again. So we start saying Should be already 
saying it with a song it's um it's a song that i wrote ages and ages and ages ago now um that was uh, definitely written as an angry breakup song and there's a lyric in it that used to be long long nose and scrawny thighs um that i had to change because he didn't like it um but i'm thinking of bringing it back so let me know what you think <laughs> um this next song i'm gonna play is a uh, man morris song and uh, it's called My Church. Hope you like it. I've cursed on Sunday. I've cheated and I've lied. And I've fallen down for grace. A few too many times. And I find holy redemption. When I put this calling in the dry. So this next song I'm going to play for you guys is another one of my own ones. It should be coming out fairly soon, um, as we mentioned before, hopefully, hopefully soon. And uh, it's called Shut Up Whatever You've Got. I hope you like it.
I hope you like that one. That was written fairly recently as well. It was only about a um, about a week ago now, and it's um, it's being recorded in Nashville as we speak. So hopefully, <laughs> hopefully by the time uh, this video is up, it is uh, well on its way to being out. Um, so this next one will be my last song, and it is another one of the ones that will be released on the EP. Um, I'm looking to release this one as a single as well. So uh, yeah, I hope you like it. It's called Heirloom and um, it was written after a conversation I had with my dad about a pocket watch that he was given by his dad and we were talking about how you get given all these really important things that are really sentimental and you end up just kind of leaving them on the kitchen cabinet or like <laughs> forgetting that they exist so um, this is called Heirloom She 
a pair of boots my daddy gave me between something borrowed and something else blue taking something old and making it new it's daddy's baby daddy a sign of his life a maker and a breaker and a telling Georgia. Man, that was really good. And come and sit with you for a minute. Um, so, the EP and the single coming out soon. And you'll have that the date on your... All your yeah, it will be on my socials as soon as I know. People will people know. Will know. <laughs> um, and again, socials? Socials are all under Georgia Official UK. And my website is pretty much where everything is. And it's just georgiaofficial.co.uk. Excellent. We'll go and check it out. Thank you for being on the show. Thank you. Thanks for having uh, me. And I uh, hope you enjoyed our visit to Brighton. I'm Camo. We'll see you next time. <laughs>